would say speak up for what you believe in, never give up on your principles, vote and ideally stand for elections. not only as members of the European Parliament, but I, I addressed the Oireachtas yesterday, you know, and I looked around, I said, not enough women, not enough young people. Uh, and that's something that I think all countries should look at. More parties should invest in having more female candidates uh, and younger candidates. And there's also a sort of a, uh, an incentive that needs to be given to younger people to say, I'll take the plunge and I might not get elected the first time, but second time I might. Four countries will vote at 16 in 2024. We'll have to see how that goes and how uh, we reach out uh, to, to students or young people who are younger than what you'd say the sort of the, the, the age one would normally talk to. But that's important, I think, that we should start talking to people who are much younger than we traditionally talk to in order to say, what are your concerns? You know, climate is big, um, migration, housing, how can you manage to, to find a job when you, when you, when you, you know, either leave school at 16 or go to university? These are all questions we need to answer. And uh, I think if you give them the vote or if you, let's say, um, show them, uh, give them the, the possibility to talk to the politicians, I think that's already more than we do to the, today. I think, first of all, more incentives get them when they're younger. Uh, when, when, it, when you're younger, it's perhaps easier to get in than when you're older. Uh, also, sort of, you know, push yourself onto the stage a little bit. And perhaps one thing that worked for me is that the older women in my political party when I was young took me under their wing and told me how to do it and how to push and, uh, and, uh, and, and go for, for better incentives. Uh, and I think it's now my responsibility to do that for the younger generation. A big discussion whether you put in measures or not. I would rather look at incentives, have more female candidates on lists, uh, rather than, you know, find yourself in a situation where you can't vote for anyone but a woman. I'd okay. rather people choose for a woman who would get more votes than a man. To go for it would be my, my to find a case or cause you believe in. Could be on a local level first, could then national, but of course uh, I'm president of the European Parliament. I'm a big advocate for decisions that are also taken at European level, but which are inspired from the ground up. Uh, just to speak up, too many People have asked me even in this trip to Ireland, you know, will my vote count or I feel that my vote doesn't count. My answer is, a huge parts of the world don't have free and fair elections. This is a country where you have. Find a candidate, find a home and push it. One of the reasons why I'm in Ireland is precisely to push back against the criticism. I think the easiest thing would be to say, I'm in Brussels, I'm going to take a decision, read it and learn it. Uh, if we learned something through the pandemic, but also during the latest energy crisis uh, and the war in Ukraine, is that our citizens, including in Ireland, have pushed their politicians into doing more in terms of solidarity, in terms of making sure that people can pay their bills at the end of the month, in terms of making sure that their voices are heard. Uh, that democratic deficit that you mentioned could be bridged by better communication, better visibility, and also holding your political representatives to account. We don't do enough of that. And I'm telling you to do that, actually, <laughs> to me. It's viewed fantastically, I must say. Uh, your country has the highest uh, statistically um, uh, average population that believes in the European Union and thinks that European Union has been a good thing for Ireland, transformative effects in terms of uh, wealth generation, competitiveness, you know, standards uh, and equality. Uh, if I look at the members of the European Parliament from Ireland, you know, they work on mental health. And here I would like to give a shout out to, to Darkness into Light, an organization in Brussels that is very um, Irish focused with a lot of Irish people pushing against uh, mental health issues. And secondly, uh, looking at a country that has faced, you know, big struggles, but has shown the resilience of a people that can, let's say, very rarely be seen in, in, in Europe for, let's say, a smaller country, one that has overcome the biggest of struggles. It's really positive, and I think you should be proud of being Irish. This has been like a 
big um, flagship program of the European Parliament, but also the European Union as a whole. Uh, rule of law, part of the fundamental values is equality and non-discrimination. Uh, we might have the best laws on paper, but there's still a lot of intolerance, a lot of homophobia, a lot of re reluctance to, to open a society as much as we should open it. Uh, we have also seen backsliding. In other words, countries that enter the European Union promising this set of rights, but then, you know, actually performing under that high standard. Uh, and we have been the first ones to call that out and say there should be, not be, for example, as are called LGBTQI free zones in Europe, you know, the whole of Europe is a place of equality, a place of, a place of openness, tolerance and the possibility to love whoever you wish to love and whoever you want to love. I think that um, I've always believed in decisions being taken at the appropriate level. So some decisions need to be taken at the European level because, as we saw in the pandemic, no country could go it alone. As we saw during the war, as we're seeing now with inflation and interest rates, no country could go it alone. However, uh, I would on the other hand say that if you want to push your narrative uh, as a country, no matter how big or small you are, you can do it. Ireland has done it. My country has done it. You know, exceptions have been given. Specific spotlights have been placed on those countries. I would not create, you know, a mutually exclusive concept of integration, but rather where we can integrate, we will. Where we can leave it at a local level, let's leave it there. Politics is a force for good. Uh, and my main message would be to stand up, speak up for what you believe in vote and potentially also run for a cause that you want to uh, push for. That's a very difficult second part, but if there's one thing I want to leave Ireland with is perhaps having convinced a few young people to do what very few young people do across Europe, but I think Ireland is a good case to start with.